the Mises Institute has a new free book for Minor Issues fans. Dr. Guido Holzman's How Inflation Destroys Civilization. Learn how inflation isn't only making us poor, it's harming our culture, mental well-being, and the moral foundations of civilization itself. Get your free copy today at Mises.org slash issues free. The valuation of equities across the S&P 500 anticipates a bright future. Although the prices of many stocks have fallen recently and fewer stocks have accounted for a larger share of the increase in the total market value of these companies, the value and expected growth of earnings remains relatively high for all tiers of this S&P 500. Consequently, the recent disparity in the performance of equities by itself does not necessarily foretell weakness unless it accurately anticipates the failure of many companies to fulfill shareholders' expectations. End quote. By Richard Kopke, Vice President and Economist with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, writing in the New England Economic Review, December of the year 2000. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Well, there has been a lot of concern expressed lately for the narrow leadership in the stock market. Has the stock market leadership become too narrow? And of course, we've been talking about this quite a long time, noting, for example, the performance of the magnificent seven stocks in the year 2023, where Apple was up 48%, Microsoft was up 57%, Alphabet or Google was up 59%. Amazon up 81%, NVIDIA, the chip maker, up 239%, Meta Platforms or Facebook up 194%, and Tesla up 102% in comparison with the S&P 500 of 24.2%. And as I mentioned in the past, Almost the entire amount of the increase in the S&P 500 stocks was attributable to the gains in those mega stocks of the Magnificent Seven. So certainly we had a very narrow, almost unbelievably narrow leadership last year. And so in this episode, we're taking a stock taking of what's happened so far in the stock market. Now go through those seven stocks. Apple year to date is basically flat. It's slightly below its recent peak, and it's still below its peak in the year 2021. Microsoft year to date is up 10% and is at an all time high. And it is above its peak in 2021 by 20%. Alphabet or Google is up year to date, but it is off its recent peak, and it is almost or close to its peak in the year 2021. Amazon is up 13% year to date, and it is approaching, but not yet there, to its peaks in the year 2021 and 2022. And NVIDIA, the chip maker, it makes chips for artificial intelligence and, of course, gaming has recently gone parabolic, which means the stock prices, if you look at it on a chart, look like it's going almost straight up. Year to date, it's up 40 percent, and that's more than double its peak price in the year 2021. Meta, or Facebook, is up 35 percent year to date. 
and it too has had a recent parabolic move, and it is well past its peak in the year 2021. The big loser of the group is Tesla. It's down 23% year to date, and it's down over 50% from its peak stock price in the year 2021. Returning to the vice president of the Boston Fed, quote, Companies' financial reports should reveal whether productivity and earnings have increased sufficiently to support the current valuations of equities. If companies can maintain their margins and their returns remain above the cost of capital as their assets continue to increase rapidly, then prospects for sustaining a higher rate of growth remain promising. But... If the persistent disparity in the performance of equities reflects a sizable erosion of margins and returns for many companies, then the economy's odds of sustaining sufficiently high growth of output and earnings diminish. Unquote. That's just a healthy reminder that a narrow stock market leadership, particularly this narrow, is a warning sign for the prospects, not just of future returns in stocks, but also of the real performance in the economy.